All right, welcome to the July 20th edition of Idea Share. So we will jump right into it. Um, oh, well, my name is Beth Golick from Key Ministry. Um, okay. Catherine Boyle is here. She's our Director of Mental Health Ministry. And looks like we've got a good group jumping on here. Um, all right, who wants to fill us in? What's going on in your neck of the woods? Perhaps not a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, Julie. So VBS happened last Wednesday night. Um, they're doing it once a week for a month. And um, so it's families only. You, you register as a family, you come as a family. There are, the rest of the building is not open, only the um, worship center. So the families had a blast, the ones that came. And of course the numbers are way down than what we're used to, but, but the families that did come loved every minute of it. So there's all kinds of hoopla going on on the stage because that's what we do for VBS, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so they also gave the families an assignment. They had to go on a scavenger hunt. And so from the pictures, we didn't go, but from the pictures, what we could see is they, they, went, they took them all over the city because there was a Dunkin' Donut picture and there was a love sign picture because, you know, it's Virginia. Mm -hmm. And then um, they had to go pick up some other stuff. So, and then there's going to be a prize. So if you post your pictures, then you get put into this little deal and you'll get a prize. So and uh, a lot of the people are really excited about coming back. So it worked out well. That's great. So the... So, so families were invited to this VBS and that was in the building, but they stayed as families. And then they were yes. sent out to do the scavenger hunt kind of on their own time sort of thing. During the week, yeah. So all during the week as a family, yeah. Okay, fun. Wow, well that's, that's, that's a great way to engage families without physically being in the building. Um, so that's kind of a fun idea. I like that. So how are they sharing their pictures then? On um, social media, so Facebook, Instagram, they can also, I think, send it somewhere if they don't have those social media okay. posts so they can send their picture to a text maybe. I forget what it is, but there's another way. Okay. Fun. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. That's great. Who else? has something new going on or an update they need to share? Anyone? All right, it looks like I have unstable internet today. That's always fun. Um, all right, anybody? Tammy, do you have something? Yeah, um, so for the summer, what our children's ministry has been doing is we have a bike path outside around our church, that's a mile. And then each week we have a theme that goes with the bike path. So last week was around the world and the emphasis was on missions. Okay. And then we have different stations set up and the kids can stop and have some kind of activity while still social distancing, being outside, um, and so that's something that our families that have kids with special mm -hmm. needs have been able to bring their, they've been able to bring their kids and participate in that. Okay. So that's what we're doing. The other thing that we're doing is um, every Thursday, I set aside time for Chalk Talk and go over to different families' houses and hang out and play with their kids outside. We wow. either have some kind of time with Sidewalk Chalk or I have all of the equipment to make an obstacle course and we'll set up an obstacle course and then we'll tie it to the online lesson that our children's ministry has on Sunday. Okay, very fun. It's really yeah. pretty much what I've been doing with the kids this summer. Um, yeah, people are loving your chalk talk idea. I love that. So how many of you have done like in-person driveway visits? Okay, so a few of you. And I'm just, I'm looking, so you represent like a lot of different levels of opening. <laughs> I'm just looking at where you all are from that just raised your hand. So, um, so that's definitely something that is, um, you know, something that can be done and it kind of depends on the family's comfort level. Cause like, I know I have a few families that they're not even open to that at this point, but definitely some that would be. So um, I love that. And I love chocolate. Yeah, that's, that's cute. Bronwyn, yeah. 
No, I say, yeah, it, today uh, we are starting our uh, summer camp and it's like a COVID camp form. Um, so we have, um, there's a part like a live stream that people have already recorded, like the, the tech team has already recorded a bunch of material on the live stream. So the kids watch that. And then at 1130, I think I should know, but I think it's at 1130. Um, between 1130 and 12, they're having a Zoom small groups based on uh, their grade. And uh, it's less content driven and more connection. Mm -hmm. And then there's optional activities at these four parks in town um, from like one to three o'clock. And that'll be interesting um, to see who comes. And uh, most people in California are, uh, are not going anywhere, um, but we offered it because some people, some people want to. Um, but a big part of it was uh, we have a whole army of volunteers that's reaching out to all of our inclusion um, families or uh, preschool or in kindergarten. They don't have a small group, so they don't really have any other way to connect. Um, and then there's kids who don't go to church at all, and they indicate that on the registration form. So those guys are the ones getting all the chalk talk visits. Like so we have this whole like army of volunteers going out and delivering like candy and writing chalk messages. And if um, families want to come out and talk, um, they can. And so uh, it starts. Some kids, uh, some of the volunteers started yesterday um, on Sunday um, when I dropped off all the materials. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, what kind of engagement because there are families who really, really want to engage, and we're trying to give them, you know, as much opportunity as we can. Um, but there's still like, like everything, like school just went all online pretty much um, for our county on uh, Thursday. They announced it, so people are mm. clamping back in. Um, so it'll be interesting. So I like uh, Tammy's idea. It gives me, I'm like, yeah, we can do this. Like this, yeah. this can be something that's helpful. So, so I'm, I'm interested to hear from my volunteers, you know, throughout the week how it, how it went and what the response was. So how are you scheduling that? Are the volunteers kind of reaching out on their own or do you have sort of a master list of what this looks like? So, um, yeah, so I've divided them all like kind of by where they live. There's like kind of like four main areas in town that sort of correspond with the parks. Um, so they're all in like a neighborhood. Um, so they're reaching out to like that particular neighborhood and uh, they, I asked the volunteers and most of them said we can, we'll make our own schedule. Like we can do it on our own. Um, so I said, okay, um, you guys make your own schedule. And they were pretty happy with that. So, um, and, and a lot of the, a lot of the families, like they know, cause like I said, like they live in their neighborhoods, so they know the kids and where they live and such. So, um, I think it could have good potential. Okay. And then, so Bronwyn and Tammy, what kind of, um, like equipment or materials are you taking to these visits? Tammy, you're muted. Sorry about that. No um, for I have a trunk full of, of stuff. So um, I head out with, I, I take sidewalk chalk with me for, because it's pretty much every time I go, it really depends on the child, where they're at, um, what their house is like, how it's situated. Do they even have a sidewalk? Is it safe? You know, out front is a busy road. Um, and so then I also take along all the supplies that I have to make an obstacle course. I actually invested in some pieces like some hula hoops with connecting parts that connect them so they stand up. And then I'll tie like targets to them and um, use squirt guns. Kids love squirt guns and water. So um, that's really, and bubbles, that's another thing. Like this week, our bike path is, um, it, the, it's the bubble palooza. And so they're going to have the giant bubbles and a giant bubble machine. And then, so I'll carry through that theme and take that with when we do uh, chop chop on Thursday because it also ties to the lesson that we had. That's really the majority of what I use. I would say the obstacle course has been a huge hit with most kids. The kids that can't participate then, either the bubbles, but they also like the um, squirt guns, even if they're sitting in a chair, you know, if I set up the targets for them to shoot at the targets. Um, that's really pretty much what I use. Okay. And Bronwyn posted in the chat, they have candy, chalk, stickers, bubbles, and some volunteers have added their own games, toys, et cetera. So do, are you 
going out solo or are you doing this in pairs? What does that look like? Um, for us, we have some uh, who are going out in pairs, like some of the junior hires are going out in pairs. Um, a lot of high schoolers um, like will recruit their siblings to come to um, and then um, you know, the older high school and college students, like sometimes they'll just do it on their own or they'll bring a friend. Um, yeah, a lot of them have done it like, or like there's families that are doing it. There's actually, um, several inclusion families that signed up to do this for other people who don't go to our church. Um, so there's, I think about six of those families that are doing it all as a family. And those kids range in age, I guess, from like probably first grade to like maybe seventh grade. Um, so some people are doing it like as a whole family. So it's kind of like, up to them and some um and some of these uh volunteers have been with a particular family or buddy for like a while or like a couple either a couple of summer camps or like during the year so they're pretty familiar so they felt okay just like yeah i could show up sorry my kids are all yelling at each other in the background <laughs> just keeping it real we okay. go out in pairs because that is our guideline that um they wanted they don't want us to send out volunteers alone especially with the, uh, the uh, restrictions with COVID in case something were to happen, somebody was exposed. So we go out in pairs, myself, or um, I have an assistant, and then we ask volunteers to join us. That's how we've been doing it. Okay, great. And again, just can I see a show of hands one more time? How many Besides um, Bronwyn and Tammy, how many of you are doing the like these kinds of um, driveway sidewalk visits? Okay, a couple others. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, any um, for let's see who is that? Kathy and Heather. Any anything you want to share from yours? Okay, Kathy says they're always too deep as well for their policy. All right. Any other things that you'd like to share about? this idea or any questions that others have? I will say um, I'm in Savannah. So um, what we have been doing is um, we intended on them to be sidewalk visits, um, but for our families, they are starved for any kind of interaction with other adults and um, someone that their children can play with. And I know that um, the Lord has been um, tremendously um, um, blessing us with the availability that our volunteers have and it seems to be that that is when um, the volunteer is available then that is the kid that is um, someone that they have already been a buddy with and so um, our um, dinner drop-offs were tremendously um, successful. Our ice cream um, Sunday Sundays have not been so successful just because it's Sunday afternoon and um, we were more inclined to just drop that off for them um, because of the nature. Um, but the parents are just um, extremely isolated and want to have any kind of interaction they can. So we don't want to linger usually with the ice cream drop offs. We just um, will actually just drop it off on their doorstep, um, let them know that it's there and then go out um, just because of the nature of the ice cream and such. Um, but I tell you, I one thing that I can't wait to do this week is um, we are going to uh, start mailing things to their houses. And um, I obtained a guideline from the post office with what can be mailed. And it's, a, it's surprising to me what all can be mailed, um, US mail, without packaging. And so um, when we do our, um, some other things um, for them coming up in August, um, I want to actually take that opportunity and mail um, like boxes of Skittles, you can mail hula hoops, you can mail bubbles. Um, there's, there's all kinds of things that, that you can actually mail that don't require um, a package. So okay, wait, 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 wait. time out. How do you mail a hula hoop? You just slap postage on it and send it. For real? You have to take it to the post office. Yeah. 
Yeah. How much but does that, that cost? Um, boxes, like movie boxes of Skittles or lemon heads or anything like that. You can just slap the label on it. Um, you can mail flip flops. Um, Hysterical. I know. So that that's something that um, I can't wait to do because, I mean, when you go to your mail and you open up the box and it's a letter, I guess that's exciting for kids who don't get mail, but I just can't imagine what their faces are going to look like when they receive mail that's like something like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Wow. Okay. Well, you'll have to keep us posted on that. That's I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. I'll either get in a lot of trouble right. or, um, or it'll be highly successful. So right. we'll see. Right. Um, that does remind me, I'm sorry. That does remind ahead, me um, in Cincinnati, the high schools all compete, uh, the private ones for your attention. And we did get a Frisbee one time that just had, it, and that could be used for a lot of, in a That's lot of ways. True. Okay. Well, you, you, you guys are giving me some fun things to think about. Um, all right, let me take a look in the chat. Um, let's see. So Bronwyn did mention that the volunteers, and, and I think, um, Heather, you mentioned this as well, can also just drop off the candy or whatever it is and run. <laughs> so that's, that's a possibility as well, and maybe some people are more comfortable with that. Um, and she says, lots of families have been outside when we have been dropping off things this summer. Seems like people really want to connect. Um, and I totally agree on that. Uh, when I do my weekly Zoom um, meetings, calls, hangouts with um, some of my students, the parents are there and they really want to talk too. So, I mean, we do our thing with the kids, but then I definitely end up kind of hanging with the moms for a little bit as well. So, um, and Tammy says the same thing. The parents enjoy the visits as much as the kids. They, um, they're so isolated. Yeah, and that's really true. Um, all right, love it. What else? Let's keep these ideas going. We have some new people, I think, on the call too today. So um, at any point, you can unmute yourself and either tell us where you're from or ask a question or ask a comment. This is like, this format is very much, it's a round table. So, um, we invite anybody to um, chime in at any point. I won't pick on people, but feel free. Okay, hi there. Is it Musi? Yeah, it's, okay. it's Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, welcome. I've, I've always had this on my calendar, but there's a conflict at work, and today it just happened to be free, so I thank God for that. And I'm here in Dallas, Texas. I don't know if you have any Texans here on the- We usually do. Anybody from, yeah, there's one. Let's oh, see. Right. So Diana's from Texas. We have at Texas? least one. <laughs> okay, so we're in Texas. I'm in Dallas. Are you North Texas? I, I, I'm in San Antonio. Okay, and then I see Houston. Okay, so I, I just thank God that I, I just happened, and nothing just happens, but I happened to see this ministry and the church that I belong to, I have a child on the spectrum, and we launched Champions Club for the kids on the autism spectrum. And that was when he was nine years old. He is 14 now. And we don't have anything per se for that age group. They, they're growing, right? And they're getting into adulthood. So we usually go to church with him. Obviously, now we don't have, you know, we don't go to church, right? But whatever. So anyway, so... I reached out to various ministries at church, whether it's outreach and asking for what what is what does inclusion look like? Where is the mental, you know, like the mental health, uh, persons with disabilities, families with special needs? And they kept telling me about Champions Club. I said no. My son was actually on the video to promote Champions Club. So what is what is there for them? And so for some reason I happened to stumble onto key ministries and I was like oh my god and so and so I'm looking around I'm looking at the comments and somebody saying oh from San Antonio California I'm like oh I guess I'm, the, I'm in a good I'm, I'm at the right spot right different state mm -hmm. but all about kids in kids with special needs and in the ministry mm -hmm. and I am at a loss of 
the job that I do, my day-to-day -day job involves autism at work. I have a child on the spectrum. So I feel like I'm, I'm emptying myself, right? And I can't start a small group for that because I need, I need all the help that I can get. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I, 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 there's, a, there's a PDF on the Keys Ministry. I'm sorry I'm long-winded, but I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. There's a PDF on Keys Ministry that talked about starting a, a ministry Mm -hmm. that and how to you know all everything the inclusion everything and i've reached out to um the various pastors of my church and I, for some reason i i just can't seem to find somebody and there's so much i can do as a parent right. i love the stories that y'all talk about you know the chalk talk and the drive by and the mailing stuff and I'm like, man, and, and then on top of that, I, we, we have small groups at church and the small group I am for women, there's four mothers with children on the spectrum. We all go to the same church, but at least out of the 19 women, four of us have children on the spectrum. Wow. Right. And so, but we don't know where to turn to. I know we need our own feeding and our own refreshing and whatever, tapping to something, but what about our kids? Mm -hmm. So, so. God, I'm glad that I was able to join today. So I, I'll just put out that. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, y'all. I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, can we help her out, folks? Yeah, please. Um, <laughs> I know when you were talking about that you're a mom and this is kind of part of your, you know, day-to-day -day experience and then maybe you're tapped out for, like, I saw a lot of heads nodding and I know there are there are a lot of ministry leaders who are also parents. So, um, so that, is, that is definitely something that I think a few folks could relate to. Um, yeah, so what do, what do we have? And yes, even though our topic on these idea shares is about how to do ministry in a pandemic, <laughs> um, I think this is, this is a very um, timely topic anyway, because, um, so many families are isolated right now and you know how can how can we bring this to the attention of our churches um, especially during this time so who'd, who'd like to kind of share either their experience or some suggestions for music and I'm, I'm going to look in the chat too to see if anybody's answered okay, it. you can tell me to go cry <laughs> No, I'm saying it's okay. Tell me to cry for a minute. It's going to get better. Any, anything at this stage. Okay, Sylvia. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the group. Excited Thank to you. see somebody new on Thank the group. Um, we can do offline. I'll put my email in, the, um, in okay. the chat. And just email me. And then maybe we connect, can connect via phone call. Sure. Um, we started our ministry in 2008 um, with one child wow. um, and we serve a variety of populations so I'll just put my so I won't take up too much of the time I'll just put my email in the um, chat box and maybe we can chat I appreciate it thank, thank you Ms. Sylvia thank you uh -huh. and Sylvia's in Maryland and I think uh -huh. a lot of us who have been on this for a while can attest that she's a wealth of information so uh -huh. definitely thank take you. her up on the offer to connect for sure uh -huh. thank you um, and I'm looking in the chat to see um, all right um, well okay let's does, does anybody else have any specific um, comments on this topic before we move on and i'm going to connect with you too you're over here actually i'm going to connect with you as well um we'll connect offline too because i would love to talk to you further uh, thank you yeah julie i just wanted to tell you that you are not alone and you're we're just a little bit ahead of you that's all and so don't feel despondent. This is just the beginning. And if you connect with Sylvia, we have already decided we're going to elect her for president. Yeah. So I think you president of the United States, by the way. We mean president of the United States. So 
Yes. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. So I did this group I, the whole that I'm a mom of a special needs daughter as well, and um, and her dad is here, and we have had varying degrees of connections with pastors. We had to leave a church actually because there wasn't a place for our daughter, and that was a hard leave because we had got I had gotten saved in that church, and you know all kinds of cool cool things happen for our other children, but not so much for our Amy. So um, just know that you're not alone, and that we'll be praying for you, and that mm -hmm. God will open up doors and give you wisdom and direction amen thank you thank you miss julie thank you sure thing. and allison um who is another wealth of information by the way has shared in the chat um for you to check out um johnny and friends texas specifically becky ellis and she has shared the becky's contact information in the chat um yeah and bronwyn says pandemic parenting is so hard yes that is true <laughs> Um, and Johnny and Friends is in Plano. Um, oh, good. Okay, yeah. Plano, just that's down the street from where I live. Yeah, I mean, not that anybody's meeting in person anytime soon, but still, <laughs> no. Um, Sylvia shared her contact information. Um, all right, I'm gonna just head back up here in the chat a little bit, just to make sure we're covering everything. And so, for those of you who don't know, these are recorded, so um, that's why I'm reading the chat, because folks that are watching this recording later don't have um they, they are not able to, to read the chat so um tammy's asking oh okay no, 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 let me go back up again um heather asked are we doing who's doing anything with adults um diana allison julie um my church i'm actually in the room where our our adult group meets it's called in his image um Kathy's asking, has anyone done outside movie drive-ins? Um, I don't think Ryan Wolf is on the call today, but his church, um, First Christian Church in Canton, Ohio, is doing one, I think, coming up. I don't think it's happened yet. Um, but it's specifically, um, I mean, it's specifically, the invitation specifically going out to the disability ministry, um, to the disability, disability community. Um, Tammy's asking, I'd love to know how your online groups are going and what you are doing to keep kids and families engaged. We are not finding success with our online ministry options. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? Um, does anybody have any success stories that they'd like to share? It can be like little tiny successes because we'll take it. Yeah, I've had great luck with our um, small group of uh, young stars that we normally have in a classroom together, not in inclusion um who have you know high needs and uh the, i think it's as um comforting to the parents to get on and pray together as it is the kids we're doing music i've got a guy who plays guitar normally on sunday morning so he's playing online it's a little tough to sing together on zoom there are times like when we're playing that i'll mute everybody so that we really and the kids have gotten used to that because it's kind of like what we do on sunday morning we're all going to take a breath and then, you know, take deep breaths and then we're going to pray together, that kind of thing. So um, I've continued on with a lot of board maker pictures um, on, on a PowerPoint. So when I'm sharing my screen and we're singing the, how are you doing today song, they can point with their parent, how they're feeling today. And, and so we can do some of those same visuals that we would do on Sunday morning um, outside of that. So um, it's working very well. I'm going to put my boss on the spot and ask her to talk about uh, their Sunday morning um, uh, program with adults too. So I, I'm just part time with the uh, young stars or the um, K to K, uh, kindergarten to sixth grade, seventh grade. So anyhow. Thank you, Kathy. It's been, it's been going very, very well for us. Um, and we'll continue that on in the fall. We're not going to be getting together until phase five in Illinois, which is pretty much a vaccine at this point. Right. Um, although they're going to school, amazingly. I don't think that's going to last long, but there we go. <laughs> All right. Julie, you want to fill us in on the rest? Um, sure. We've done um, pre-recorded Sunday morning lessons that have been steady since March. And those are just links that people can click through to. We have worship music. And then we have prayer requests that have come in and we do a prayer time. So three, they're short videos. 
um, using this Free Bible Images website that has pictures and just PowerPoint that shows pictures that people can see for the stories. Um, we've had small groups that have been a Zoom call and they're 30 minutes. 15 minutes of it is connecting, people seeing each other's faces, and everyone comes in with one prayer request and one praise. And we've had, um, we've gotten together as a big group and then broken down into smaller groups in the breakout rooms that has just helped connect people. And that's what feeds our prayer link mm -hmm. as well. And we stopped those for this month because we've got Vacation Bible School two days a week um, via Zoom, which has been good. People like the interactive. And we did do music camp as well. Okay. So. Great. In the thick of things, but trying to mix it up too. Yeah. Hey, you weren't on when we were talking. Oh, sure. We, we've just, um, I've gone and met with families and checked in to see how they're doing. It helps me get kind of a temperature of how um, people are doing, but also a sense for how people are feeling at returning. And like all of us, we feel differently about um, coming back and our readiness. Um, and I visited with a family whose son is in a wheelchair as cerebral palsy, and they're ready to come back. And I'm like, I don't think we're ready for you. But it's a great time to connect and to see each other face to face. And it's just a really quick but deep dive. I'm there for an hour max. And so it's been good. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're kind of all experiencing like such a wide range of emotions, but also like you're saying it's been great to connect. And I've certainly had experiences where it's been great to connect via Zoom. But we also know that people, and as Tammy mentioned in the chat, are completely burned out with Zoom as well. Um, and it just doesn't work for some kids. Um, so it's tough. Um, Tammy said um, families are burned out from technology. They have a small group on Sundays where they record a special needs lesson for their classes, but not a single parent has viewed the lessons yet. And that's tough. Um, I know our children's ministry is doing all kinds of online resources. And yeah, we can view, we know like how often they're being downloaded or viewed or whatever, and it can get discouraging at times. Um, but then, and this I guess would be like a small little victory. When you do hear from somebody who has participated with their family, with the lesson or whatever, um, and they've taken the time to let you know that, it's, it does, I mean that you're, okay, it's, it's worth it. We're doing this for a reason. Um, my little victory is, um, you know, I do a Thursday morning one and I only had two students on it this last Thursday. Um, but then I got um, texts from two others and they said, oh, we missed it. Can you, you know, will you, would you consider doing it again? And so I did for those two. And just, you know, the fact that they reached out and wanted to do that um, that was like a little small victory for me. Like, okay, this, this is, I'm glad I'm doing this. So Heather, you had something? Did you have your hand raised? I just want to share my victory story. It's, it's really quick. Um, the adult that I have in mind um, has special needs and he came to our church because he had burned bridges in every other church he had been to. And they had asked him to leave, um, and it just, it was not working well for their family. They ended up moving to Savannah from um, Tennessee, um, had a Tourette's type of, um, I guess, syndrome. Um, where he would do nothing but curse and um, he, he just it's it's been a long 18 months um, but now his mom said now you know we we don't talk like that and he said oh yeah he said nope I, I'm sorry um, Miss Heather I'm sorry I didn't mean to say that I did not hear what he said anyway regardless he said yes because and this, this almost made me like tear up. He said, um, yes, because when I die, I want to go to heaven with Miss Heather. Oh, that's sweet. 
Thank you for sharing that. And I couldn't believe that he actually said that because he's never, ever said anything of me. Like, we always wonder, like, you know, how many people are actually getting it. And I guess if we just continue to focus on the one, um, because even if it's one, then that's one more. Um, so we should never feel like one is too few if even one person is, is downloading or viewing. Thank you for sharing. I, either your internet's bad or mine's bad. It's probably mine. So, um, but that was, that was, thank you for sharing. Um, all right, Diana, do, do you have something? Yeah, Diana, no. You're muted. I don't. No, you're there. Yeah. I'm muted now. Yeah. I had it, I, I had it muted before and never muted yeah. it back again. <laughs> Um, no, with our adult groups, um, we've we've actually been having some pretty good success on Zoom. And just listening to Heather's point, we have um, one or two that we've at at in person have had some <clears throat> some issues. Um, and and so one of the really neat things with Zoom is is that um, as host, I can mute them. And so when I start to hear something inappropriate, um, and I've talked to his mother. He's an you know obviously an adult, but he lives at home, and um, have really good rapport with her, and just told her. That is what I'm going to do. And then um, the volunteers that are in there with me, we, we kind of co-teach and they've kind of laughed that too bad we don't have a mute button when we do get back <laughs> into real life. Because it's, it's really made it a lot, lot easier. And then uh, just another quick success, um, I would guess, because I know a lot of you have been saying that you've had a lot of troubles with Zoom. Um, the ones that I've had interested have stayed interested, but then there's some that have never been interested. So I don't know, that's kind of different um, viewpoint on it and I don't can't make them do it um, but I also have a group that meets on Wednesdays um, in the middle of the day we call it midweek manna and it's not just parents and it's not just there are some special needs adults and there are some volunteers it's just a whole mix of group but we do it mainly for socialization we're not there to tell our stories um, some of my volunteers are in the group so we get together and um, we share right now media. So we're doing a Max Licato study. So we focus on the study and the topic. And right now we're doing Traveling Light, which is kind of an older one. I didn't want to do one on the pandemic because it seems like we're just so focused on that. So I wanted to move off topic a little bit. Um, and we've had really, really good participation, um, especially with the parents that come on and it's just a normal Bible study. But I've um, personally invited them. So that was just kind of a different way to do it. I don't remember if I've shared that before, so. Thank you. Yeah, we're always looking for new ways, aren't we? Um, new ways to connect. Um, in the chat, Allison has shared that um, their Sunday lesson in Summer Social is on Zoom, and their Summer Socials have included bingo, scavenger hunt, pet show and tell, um, I must ask you a question, Sand art, virtual Uno, and sometimes the parents play along too, and it's been fun and purely a purely social time to connect. And I highly recommend. Um, Allison has done just some amazing kind of virtual connection game night, family fun type things. So she's a great resource um, for that. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Joanne has mentioned they do dance breaks, um, purely social connection at the end. We offer prayer time. I love that. Um, that's pretty cool. And uh, let's see what else. Um, Angel is asking, Julie, could you share the website you use for the activities? So I forget what that's in reference to, but... Um, I'm not sure which, which activities. Um, if anybody wants to clarify that, go ahead. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, let's see, the Kathy's Young Stars do um, videos, lesson, music, and prayer. And Tammy, oh no, from Allison to everyone. Allison, okay, Allison, every Thursday they have a summer social and Sundays they have a Bible lesson, okay. Let's see. Are we caught up on the, I think we're caught up on the, um, the chat. Uh, okay, great. Um, 
All right, what else do we have going on here? So, so to clarify, hi everyone, my name is Angel Johnson. Welcome. And uh, thank you. So this is my first time joining the meeting. I have the pleasure of being the vice president of Ms. Sylvia Taylor. Um, <laughs> I am from Maryland as well at First Baptist Church of Ben Arden. Um, and uh, I was asking Julie about, she had mentioned um, that she does something with a, a program that either reads books or has some activities that she does with the kids online. And I was um, asking for her to, if that was a re if that was an online resource that she would share it. So like there were some online activities that she was using um, during some of her activities. Um, I just also wanted to quickly just, uh, share that we also somewhat struggled um, with the online platform. Uh, we've done some pre-recordings um, and sent them out and, and asked for feedback and didn't get very much. So we didn't feel like we may have gotten uh, a lot of clicks on it to watch it. Um, we since decided to put together, um, we put together like a mini movie, a mini, um, it was probably about 10, 15 minutes where each of our volunteers recorded a message to their, we call our kids VIPs. Um, so they, whichever one you are already partnered up with, you sent a, a little message to them. Um, and so we put all of the messages together with some videos and some pictures of our gatherings um, and put that together and sent that out to the families and got some really good feedback from that. Um, we've also done some school, we did some summer fun packs where we had some bags donated and we got a bunch of summer fun stuff, bubbles, yeah, all, all types of stuff, stickers, things that you would play with over the summer. Um, and we had our volunteers to deliver them to the houses as safely as possible um, to the families. And that was a huge success as well. Um, we have some really cool things that we are in the process of putting together for the fall um, because our church has, has pretty much decided that we will not be coming back in 2020. So we've had to really think about long term what does serving our community look like? Um, and so one of the things uh, we're wanting to do, we're thinking about doing is having a virtual dinner where maybe sometime during the day, we have all of our families come together, whether it's a snack or it's your lunchtime or your dinner time. We haven't put down all the details, but let's all get on and just have dinner together. Um, just break bread together. Um, we also may wanna do in October, where we have um, some characters to dress up. We're gonna figure out what, what characters our kids really like. Um, and with a volunteer, have Spider-Man show up at your door um, or you know, have Big Bird. We're gonna figure out what characters that really gets them going. And with a volunteer, have a character just to stop by and say, hey, we're thinking about you. We wanna just put a smile on your face and say, and say he hello. Um, so those are just a few of the things we're thinking about <laughs> for the fall to do for each each month we want to do something big something special um with our with our kids so november would be the dinner and october would be the character um of course october uh august school starts hopefully starting back and here in maryland um there are options a lot so a lot of parents are going to be going back face to face um but it's also virtual so it, whichever all of our kids are going back at the end of august so we're going to do a parade a welcome back to school parade where all of our volunteers will hopefully come together and just kind of ride by houses, honk the horn, have signs and say, let's, we're so excited to go back to school. So those are just a few things that we in Maryland are attempting to do in the upcoming fall. I love it. Thanks for sharing. I don't know if you saw me write down summer fun packs and then Bronwyn <laughs> posted, I love the summer fun packs. So yeah, expect to hear reports about people, uh, people from this call implementing <laughs> summer fun packs. I love cool. it. Um, I, was gonna, I was gonna say uh, one thing too that I uh, have been excited about is just seeing the creativity of the volunteers come through during this time. Um, like for the summer camp thing we're doing, you know, usually it's like we all get together and, and it's like a fairly large camp for the area. It's probably one of the bigger ones. Um, and we all have shirts and like all this kind of swag stuff. Um, we don't have that this year because we're not gathering. Um, so one of the volunteers said, hey, can I make custom made puff paint shirts for like the kids that I'm going to the house for and I was like yeah go ahead I, I would have never thought that like I'm that's not like my wheelhouse as a craft so there's like people sending like puff paint you know t-shirts there's someone that like some one of the um junior hires her mom texted me yesterday and said oh they just like 
her and her friend went to the store and they're buying like extra stuff for their people because they thought about different things they might like and I was like oh so it's just kind of interesting to see like you know when there's um yeah I think like you know when we're doing our regular like programming or whatever there's like these things you know that we do right and there's these ways that we do them but now in the absence of that I think you know I've said yeah go ahead. and like one kid he's gonna um make a video like teaching kids how to play the guitar like the ukulele or something mm -hmm. and we've done a couple of those videos so it's just been really interesting to see like all the different um you know ways and a lot of these like most of this is coming from you know kids ages 13 to 17 um mostly and so um you know I've, I've given them a lot of bandwidth on like yeah make that puff paint shirt like go for it yes like buy that random like whatever you're buying you know at the grocery store and drop it off with the candies go ahead um so I don't know, like if, you know, I think especially, you know, people who are sitting around and not feeling a whole lot of purpose when they feel like they can connect with someone, you know, especially, you know, kids, they, they really feel like they have this purpose. So, yeah. and on the virtual dinner idea, we did that with our small group last night and it was like way more fun than I kind of anticipated. Like it was, it was nice to feel like you're sort of doing something normal with someone else, even when they're on a screen. Um, and of course, all the kids were like jumping in and like, you know, look at what I'm eating. Um, but yeah, it was kind of, we had, I think there's five of us families um, on there. So it's kind of fun. Very cool. Thank you. Well, there, there you go, Angel. There's your, uh, <laughs> somebody tested it out for you already. Um, good, good. I want to go back to a point that Angel made and, and Bron one too, and that's involving volunteers. And I think it was last week on Idea Share, we really talked about, or we talked about the importance of, um, really involving the volunteers and casting the vision. I think that was on this last week, but um, in any case, it's just so important because at some point we're all gonna be back and um, wouldn't it be great if all of, our, all of our volunteers and more came back with us. Um, and so any way that you can involve your volunteers, empower your volunteers, share that vision with them is so important. And it could be, um, I think it was Angel that mentioned, um, making the little videos like the, the volunteers created the videos um, to send to to the you know the folks that they're buddied with um, that's it's really important um, uh, let's see so Tammy's asking will you be holding a special meeting to talk about fall ministry plans so do you mean like will key ministry be hosting this is that what you mean um, I think we're gonna do these idea shares through September except for a couple dates um, and that's all posted on the events page and I think we can use we can use this to talk about what fall is going to look like it's going to look really different for each of us um, some of you will be like a hundred percent back in business I mean a new normal but you'll be back in person and some of you your churches will not be back in person in the fall so I encourage you to like, let's use this forum for sure um, to continue to talk about what, you know, what fall is gonna look like, whether it's in person, doing the virtual thing, some kind of, you know, mixture of the two, because I mean, I think we, we all would agree that we cannot lose this, um, like the virtual piece as we go forward and even when we are back in person because there will be families who are not going to be able to be back in person. Um, so Tammy, I hope that answers the question. And any way that Key Ministry can help equip you ministry leaders, um, let us know. So if, you know, if, if we don't want to lose this forum, we could continue to do this, like what, whatever it is that can help all of us um, let's do it. Um, all right, we're getting near the end of our time. Um, let's see how Catherine's internet is doing and see, see if she can fill us in on what Key Ministry is up to for the next week or two. Well, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm showing up in green, so that's a good okay. sign. <laughs> good sign. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not been a great day for my internet so far, but um, so this Wednesday, we're having a, a really great webinar, and I hope that all of you can attend, or if you can't attend, at least be able to view the video afterwards. Um, we're going to be talking with Shannon Royce, who is the head of the um, Health and Human Services Office of Faith-Based Initiatives. So what she does, and her counterparts and other federal agencies, is works with faith communities to help meet, you know, 
Oh no. <laughs> yeah, focus for okay. their particular but, department. But it, so she's with health and human health and human services. And so they have had a very large emphasis on mental illness. And Key Ministry has been honored to be a part of a working group that's been meeting, I don't know, two or three times a year for the last couple of years and have helped put together um, with the guidance of HHS this, this document for faith communities called Compassion in Action. And it's, it's really um, just a great approach to help churches understand the need for and, and how to do mental health ministry. Um, so it's not a how-to, but it's, a, it's kind of a, a why you should care and how you can show that you care. Um, so just can't emphasize strongly enough how great it would be to have you join us on the webinar. Um, the registration link is on the Key Ministry um, events page. And then um, we've got a couple of other great webinars coming up in August that we don't have on our events page just yet, but we're working out the details. So I just really encourage you to, to check back um, later this week after we get through the Wednesday webinar um, to see what we've got coming up for August. All right, thank you, Catherine. Any questions about what's out there as far as um, resources from Key Ministry? All right. Well, everybody have a wonderful week. I know that. Yeah, go ahead. Pam? Oh, I was just gonna mention it really quickly because I know all your partners that you have for resources like Johnny and Friends are really good. And I don't know if this is just Johnny and Friends Texas because all of our retreats were canceled, but they are doing online. So I know for the two on here from Texas that it, um, at least um, I think it was posted earlier to get with Becky Ellis and get that. Um, I sent it out to all our families, but it'll be an online family retreat. Um, and if any of your families have ever been to a Johnny and Friends family retreat, they're going to have a lot of the same components, including the talent show. So just another really good resource that's kind of through Key Ministry. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, I know um, Johnny and Friends Ohio is doing the same thing because obviously our, all of our camps, our retreats got canceled too. So, um, so uh, Kathy, uh, so I wanted, uh, let's see, um, uh, summer, who did the summer fun packs? Was that Angel? Who did summer? Who's doing summer fun pack? Yeah, Angel. So Angel, take a look in the chat. Allison would love to um, connect with you. Um, Christy is looking for recordings from the webinars, um, specifically looking for the ISP. So if you go to keyministry.org, um, there's lots of ways you can see um, the recording. So one is you could just go down to the very bottom of the page and click on the Vimeo link and you can see either on Vimeo or YouTube. Um, but also if you look under the four churches link, any of our we've got a lot of webinars okay <laughs> any of our disability ministry video roundtables which is the third wednesday of the month and we recently did one on um, um isps which is individualized spiritual plans you'll find those on the um video roundtable link we have mental health webinars those are under the the mental health tab we have anything related to coronavirus which includes idea share is on our coronavirus page. So just take a look at keyministry.org and um, you'll find a lot of resources. And then just reach out to me if, um, you know, if you can't find something, I'm just beth at keyministry.org. Um, Kathy, I think you had something. Yeah, just real quick, something to think about for the, maybe for the next idea share is mm -hmm. as when we do return, I'm concerned about those individuals um, with high functioning autism and whatnot and how to re-enter. I think they're doing better than most with the coronavirus, uh, a lot of them, um, because you know there aren't as many demands on them. But I think as we re-enter into um, church and, and those kinds of things face to face, I think we're going to be thinking about, and I'm making generalizations, not all, but some are going to have a, a hard time making that transition and, and thinking about ways that we're going to prepare them to transition. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when we are back in person, it's not going to be like starting from scratch, but there's definitely going to be transitions involved for sure. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We Can will see you. Oh, yeah. Who's, who's, there you go. Musi, yes.
Yeah, let me say something real quick. Yeah, that's a very good point. Like I mentioned before, the job that I do is is autism at work. Mm-hmm. That's what I autism at work. Okay. And we we've been having seminars and webinars about how to return to the office because folks that are on the spectrum to them, COVID per se is not the big issue like you and I, but it's more of what does normal look like right? They used a certain routine and all of a sudden, we don't even know, we're, we're 100% uncertain of how things we are and, and, and 0% sure of right. what's going to, how everything's going to look like. So that limbo status for us, the neurotypicals is kind of different. So now flip the side over to what does church ministry look like? So I think that's a very valid point to address in the sense that it may not be the normal that you're used to, but this is how. And, and so just getting those steps so it's from a teenage level toddler whatever all the way through adulthood so those are some of the things that need to be addressed and, and prayed about yeah absolutely and so we hope that you'll continue to join us on these idea shares so you can help us work through some of these <laughs> thank you um all right everybody we will see you next monday have a wonderful week Bradman, are you waving or are you are you do you need to oh she's waving okay all right bye everybody